Welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending November 6th, 2021. Been a different setup this week, but we're just going to dive right into it. Um, TIFFCOM is a content market affiliated with the Tokyo International Film Festival. Uh, it was held this week and featured two different seminars from anime companies discussing overseas distribution. This is interesting. Um, anime producers and CEOs Nao Hirosawa of Arch Inc. and Grafenica and Akira Takayama of Fanworks um, spoke at the Next Generation Anime Producers Plan for Overseas Collaboration and Production seminar, which sounds like an isekai title. Oh, yeah. Discussing the upsides and challenges of global collaboration. Um, both emphasize the importance of building trust with international partners. No surprise there. Um, both business and personal level. Um, Hirasawa also pointed out that making anime requires a long-term partnership and stressed the importance of having a partner who demonstrates their commitment to the project, saying that he even preferred dealing with companies who were willing to establish a branch office in Japan. Huh. So the bar is high. Um, yeah. Both speakers talk about the challenge of dealing with differences in culture. Uh, varying reactions to certain content, content can lead to conflict between Japanese creators and the overseas audiences which sometimes results in doubts on the sides of the creators or even the need for a third-party par mediator. Um, however, the exposure to new viewpoints and cultures allows creators to expand the possibilities of their creations. Takayama also mentioned his responsibility to make decisions that are reasonable for the creative side. If overseas partners ask for something unrealistic, it's important to protect the creators as well if good business relationships are to continue. Um, of course, the effects of the coronavirus uh, pandemic couldn't go undiscussed. Though it has caused delays and difficulties both on production and financing, the outlook for the future was optimistic. Both speakers expect the lessons learned from being forced to work remotely can be easily applied to future interactions with overseas partners. And the world's trend toward online communication, even domestically, will have a positive impact going forward. So that's nice. Um, also at TIFCOM was... Katakawa's anime over... An <sighs> Katakawa Anime's Overseas Business Strategy Case of Isekai and Future Prospects Seminar. Can you believe I was reincarnated as an anime panel? Where Katakawa's <laughs> executive officer and animation group general manager discuss the company's current anime business strategy and how they intend to expand their properties overseas. Uh, domestically, they follow a straightforward model for success. Um, invest in multiple forms of media to continuously promote the original novel and extend the IP's life cycle. The source material novels are published for a few months or a year before the screen ad adaptation comes out, and its adaptation becomes a nexus that both supports for the development of the franchise and introduces new fans to the novels. This media mix strategy doesn't seem to work as well overseas, however, and the company's been working for the past couple of years to refine their overseas promotion strategies. And this is one of the things that, you know, yes, they'll, they'll release the light novels over here, but light novels don't generally explode, right? Yeah. And so it's like, eh. Yeah. Um, unsurprisingly, Katakawa has identified isekai light novels as a major source of growth over the past decade, noting their common denominator of originating as web novels that are later, later republished as books and adapted for the screen. As isekai is also incredibly popular overseas as a genre, Katakawa's leaders hope that these light novels can serve as a springboard for overseas development and aim to more aggressively target the global market once the pandemic eventually ends. Uh, they emphasize the importance of continuously working with foreign partners to market and pro promote the IPs rather than just selling them at the highest price to licensees, um, which helps explain... That's key. Yes, which also helps explain Funimation and the consolidation of the market. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm a spider, so what <clears throat> was cited as a success of this model? Um, the series was predicted to have a higher growth potential abroad than in Japan, and the anime was a co-production with Crunchyroll. By cooperating closely with Crunchyroll on the marketing side as well, um, the anime was able to reach its top potential, becoming one of the top five shows on the streaming service during its run, and exceeding its minimum guarantee for royalties within six months. Ooh. Not bad. Um, generally, these contracts last five to seven years, so that's, yeah. that's a, a good number. Um, according to the Katakawa executives, the marketing for the series was so successful because the companies were able to fulfill common requests from overseas marketing licensors, Things like permission to release information about the title at the same time as in Japan, free access to visual access from the series, and outreach from the production staff. Uh, mm -hmm. They expressed they learned a lot about how to better engage with overseas audiences through these experiences and plan to push this angle even further for releasing future content. That's um, fun. Yeah, interesting. 
Interesting. Gosh, we would only been capable of doing this 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, where would we be now? No. <laughs> Even 10 years ago, if we'd been no able joke. to be in this place in time, this would have yeah. been a wild place to be right well, now. Yeah. Thank you, Mugen Train, because that's what's yes. made all this happen. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, which I still haven't seen, by the way. Um, believe it or not. I <laughs> didn't see Dune yet, so, you know. <laughs> the, lone, the, the lone viewer of the apocalypse. All right. Um, <laughs> so... I, so I'm hearing all this and I think it's great. And I think part of it is, is that they're actually one of the, one of the, the nice things is that they're actually identifying correctly what is hitting right overseas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like with the Isakai, even though we joke about so much Isakai, the thing is, is that the reason why there is so much Isakai is because it works out. Yeah. It sells. yeah. It sells. Mm-hmm. You know, the thing about spider, which, you know, John and I both love the door, um, you know, I think one of the big successes of that is that it is not a boy centric mm. isekai, mm-hmm. and okay. I think I think you're ha- you're hitting the Gundam Wing model, where yeah. suddenly you know it's like all these girls are getting into it, and it's it's an action character. It's cute, mm-hmm. but it's an action character that does things that accomplishes things that are is positive, mm. not Shinji. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But the but the good th- but the upshot of this is is that they're re- they're recognizing that they have elements of good product and they want to get it out and they're they're understanding they're starting to understand what doesn't work like light like novels over here, right. and so maybe they'll they'll fi- they'll be able to figure out with partners like you know like say if we had a company right mm. okay um, and just said okay we're gonna help you license things over here mm. for us it would be like we're not gonna put so much emphasis on the light novel. Mm-hmm. you know kind of a thing and we're just right. this is over here this is what you need to do maybe in france is a different thing maybe in britain it's another thing so if they're open to doing that that's great i think they're going to come to terms about having a branch office in japan yeah i, I think that will quickly go yeah. on the side mm-hmm. well <laughs> um, or unless know, just, unless they're willing to pay for it but, yeah or it'll just be all funimation right? yeah they'll work with three different right. companies you know that'll be it Right. Well, you know, and that'd be the interesting thing is, um, I wonder how many smaller licensed people would be willing mm-hmm. to throw in a budget and literally have a consolidated office. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that you have like five people, you know, five companies that want to license stuff and mm-hmm. they having a branch in Japan. But yeah, all five of them are in like a 10 by 10 room in like mm-hmm. Shinjuku. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, there's just... You know what I mean? But, yeah. One company a, a month shows up mm. and that's their space and mm. then they just rotate people in that mm. space so they can have a physical presence and as you know it said, you know, the Katakawa thing, it's like establishing personal rapport. Mm. Um, how how that would be received on the Japanese yeah. end versus having a permanent office there? Well, I, I suspect yeah. by permanent office they, they mean less like literally physical office space as having you know at least one employee working in Japan. You know, whether yeah. you happen to be like like a liaison or, or right. Well, I mean, yeah. that's yeah. that's why you have agents for service for contracts. Right. Yeah, that's right. Get yeah. somebody yeah. local yeah. there. Um, what's the but, but I, I'm sorry. The, the other thing I was just going to throw out there was that is it's nice to hear that they are starting to be more realistic about licensing. Hmm. It sounds from what you described to me, it sounds like they're being a little bit more open to the idea of not being as restrict, restrictive with their licensing, meaning that actually, John, what you're pointing out is the smaller guys might be able to buy into this and it won't be just mm. massive corporations, just based on what you, on yeah. what you were, you, you were reading off there. It's interesting. I, but, I, and now I'm not saying that they are doing it. It just sounds like they're, they're right. starting to open up a little bit to the idea of it. I, I, I that, that's interesting. I, I, that's not how I read this at all. Um, Cause to me, when they say you know it's challenging dealing with um, you know the 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 difference between uh, creative and the marketing folks, and then when they talk about how to, needing to have um, you know long term creative uh, relationships with companies like so I'm a spider, that sounds to me like something that p- pushes out the smaller guys and requires the bigger companies to me. Oh no, that, what I'm saying is that it, is that they are. 
not just saying the, the big guys. They're they're mm -hmm. open to may not be spider. It might be other types of. I'm just saying licensing mm -hmm. in general. Okay. Well, well, there was yeah, there was they, something they, there talking about uh, was it emphasizing um, importance of continuously working with foreign partners, market to promote the international right. intellectual properties, the properties rather yeah. than just sell it to the highest price. Yeah, bitter. But yeah, to me that means that if you don't already have a relationship with them, you're you're out. Yeah, which is going to be the continuous somebody you know, on the ground there. It's going to be the yeah. key to get that personal yeah. relationship. Yeah, um, I think it's going to be harder for for the, for the smaller companies um, because um, um, I just I just don't know how they're going to be able to compete with uh, with these other these bigger companies on having those relationships. That's what I feel. I mean, it's going to be a serious financial commitment to like yeah. you know either have an agent on site. Yeah. Or several times a year, mm -hmm. and send people over, and then spend a chunk of time, right. you know, wooing these different uh, companies well, to try and get. Right. But but yeah. but to your point, you know, Steve, I think one of the one of the downsides of the earlier model is that the the, the Japanese company's view was we're going to throw this anime over the wall at a licensor. You know, they pay us however much money. We'll throw it to them, and they deal with it in their country. And it had the kind of the upside that, okay, as long as we have the money, we can do it. But the downside was, well, can we have some promotional material? Can we have, you know, something from a voice actor? Or something? No, it's just, here's the thing, you're done. Um, yeah. And it's one of the things that held, held us back for a long time is that there were none of, none of these big relationships. There were none of these things. And so you just kind of had to do what you could with what you had. Um, so I think I, I, I certainly agree that there's, there's a, a broadening of minds in all this well brent i i have a question yeah for your um your panel about anime and, and finance and mm. how that mm. you did i remember a graph where you showed like you know japanese anime is very concerned with japanese domestic market mm -hmm. and international markets is out there it's great mm -hmm. to provide some money that's super if it does well that's fine mm -hmm. do you think this is shifting that i mean this Definitely. sounds an awful lot Definitely. like they're hey oh, yeah. the international market yeah. yeah, domestic is like bread and butter, but mm -hmm. this is like having cake and dessert and yeah, all kinds of good right. stuff too. Well, and to Steve's earlier point, I think Mugen Train also moved the needle on that too. When they saw that it did great in, in Japan and it did very well internationally. Yeah. But they were like, ah, okay, times are changing, you know, and there's there's money to be made as well. Yeah. And it, it was it was moving I mean, that direction anyway, but yeah. Right. Well, I was going to say, I would have thought that paying attention to Netflix producing anime, mm -hmm. having all these streaming sites over the last, you know, five or ten years, well, five years, mm -hmm. um, that it would, that needle would have been moving faster. Well, but, but you know, you Mugen know, Train was a proof of concept. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and also, <laughs> you know, anime has been making more and more money every year, like for the past several decades. Like it's been right. going up and up and up and up. Um, and there have been obviously bumps along the way, but I think it's one of those right. things where it's like, why upset the apple cart, right? Like right. everything's going fine, um, you know. So. And then Mugen Train. Right? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, also this week, you, remember, you may remember the announcement a few weeks ago of a Kickstarter campaign to fund a new English dub of the 80, 1985 Dirty Pair TV anime. Dirty Pair. Yep. Well, end of this week, and fans really came through. Um, not only did they uh, meet the initial $275,000 goal, they reached every single stretch goal as well, raising more than $730,000 Sweet from 3,000 plus backers. Uh, so Steve Bloom is doing who? <laughs> um, the many rewards that will now be created uh, include episode commentaries, art books, audio tracks, and interviews. Wow. Nice. Dang. Awesome. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, it's so why dirty pair? Like I love dirty pair. Don't get me wrong. I love dirty pair. But why is that the new Mugen train for it for American anime fans? So so weird. Hopefully this just you know, it just cracks the crust and that we're yeah. gonna get all of the ones that mm. I've, you know, seen mm -hmm. listed as like, oh, yeah. this is you know, if you like this genre, then you'll enjoy you these things. And I can never find whatever yeah. the things are referenced. Be yeah. like, come on. If this worked, maybe we can get another good one. Kino's Journey, yeah. original series, please. Um, please. Oh. Oh. Um, 
Uh, also, a much hoped for anime adaptation, especially in this house, was finally announced this week. Tatsuya Endo's Spy Cross Family manga yes. is getting a TV <laughs> anime sometime next year. Uh, and Kazuhiro Furuhashi, director of Rurouni Kenshin, Hunter x Hunter, and Gundam Unicorn, oh, wow. will direct the show at Wit Studio and Cloverworks. Cloverworks. Yes. Wow. Um, the... So that's why I could hear the scream of yes. joy all the way up here in Baltimore. Okay. Yep. And I've not, I've not seen any of this. Just by your excitement <laughs> right? Yes. Stuff, I'm like... Well, <laughs> check out the trailer, because they released a trailer with, which includes animation. And shows you the characters and all that, and I'm like, "Yep, yep, you are nailing this." <laughs> nice. um, it's a domestic spy comedy about a master spy who has to find both a wife and a child stand in for his next mission, uh, without realizing that his wife is an assassin and the child a telepath. Um, <laughs> so it's great! Awesome. It's just, <laughs> uh, it's just, oh, that is such a wonderful, wonderful show. Um, yeah, to, me too, Jay. I'm so looking forward to that. Um, Noriyasu Agamatsu and Elements Garden, the creators behind Uta no Prince Sama, Sympho Gear, and Visual Prison, have teamed up, teamed up again to develop a new musical multimedia project, because you don't have enough of those. Um, of <laughs> along with their assist, Ruka, the team is creating Techno Roid, which sounds like an electronic album. Um, or and a medical one, problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 oh. Um, uh, 2022 Doctor, anime I've got this pain and it's just like right here and it just feels like wires and chips and oh you've got a case of technoroid techno did you sit on a computer recently <laughs> oh yes I did right. here's some balm <laughs> um, it'll include a 2022 anime and smartphone game and undoubtedly plenty of musical releases and merchandise yeah. it's a story about quote Wretched, beautiful androids, end quote. Um, <laughs> you set in a tower the humanity lives in after climate change submerged the world underwater and follow several musical units as they compete to rise to the top, naturally. Uh-huh. Um, Sony Music Labels launched a multimedia virtual YouTuber project on Monday with involvement from the character designer of K-On, Yukiko mm-hmm. Horiguchi, and the creator of Kaguya-sama Love is War, Aka Akasaka. The project Verse N, or Versen, or whatever, uh, will center on VTubers with a past, telling a story of, quote, girls who connect the world, end quote, through live streams, anime, music, novels, manga, and more. Uh, an animated promo video will uh, come out November 12th. Um, <laughs> TV Tokyo announced an anime adaptation uh, for Kanamafune's On Air Dekinai and On Air Dekinai Deep. Um, uh, essay manga, uh, which follows a new hire at a Tokyo TV company, as they learn the struggle behind the scenes of making television content. Mm. Um, the author is a member of the BSTV Tokyo organization, so parts of the essay manga are straight from their time as a TV Tokyo employee. Interesting. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to that. Um, Yuki Sato's Tomodachi Game manga is also getting a TV anime adaptation. Um, yeah, and it'll come out in April if I was a student whose peaceful, peaceful life suddenly ends when he gets caught up in a mysterious game for money and must decide whether money or his friends matter more. I wonder what the... Yeah, wonder where that one's going to go. Um, Toy began money. streaming... Yeah, exactly. Uh, Toy began streaming trailers for two new anime films this week. Brent's going to get the money. <laughs> One moment. Stand by on control. <laughs> See with this filter, it's really hard to tell what what like. I, I know. Is, I can't. Is, is, is there? <laughs> Okay. I was going to say, is there an emergency? Are, are we okay? Both of which come from the University of Mizuki Tsujimura's anime supremacy novel. Um, the novel ah. follows creators in the anime industry, and the films featured in the trailers are films directed by characters in the novel. So they're adapting the anime made by the characters in the book. Okay. 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 More meta. Than that. <laughs> exactly. That'll be really interesting. Yeah, very much yeah. so. Um, both films are scheduled to release sometime next year. Um, more anime is also available for legal free streaming this week. 
thanks to uh, uh, streaming service Tubi and NIS America. Um, 17 of NIS America's anime series have been added to the service, including Usagi Drop, Cardcaptor Sakura, both mm-hmm. English and Japanese, Toradora, English and Japanese, and lots of other favorites. So a lot of the classic stuff coming, which is always awesome. Um, um, Usagi Drop, watch the anime, don't read the manga. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Toradora, always, always fun. Hey, there we go. Um, there's a current anime that really reminded me of Torador, and I was like, oh, da, 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 da. oh, Senpai. Senpai's, Senpai's annoying. Wrong. Yeah, to- it's totally Torador. Oh. And by the way, uh, Senpai's tie is Eva Unit 1. Uh, it all makes sense. Purple and green stripes. Uh, yeah, it's, no, no, no ab- absolutely. No, I saw that tie, and I was like, oh, yeah, like it's, it's definitely an Eva Unit. Yeah, yeah. Um... Finally, Graphic yes. Audio announced this week that Hideki Kikuchi and Yoshitaka Amano's Vampire Hunter D novels will be released as English language audiobooks. What? Oh. That's an experience. Um, hey, come and, back! And they're making hey. them as full cast audio. Sound effects, oh, wow. music, whole nine oh, yards. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that'll be better. Okay, that's better. Okay, yeah. that's, better. Um, that's better. I mean, I that's love a good narrated audio book. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, that's very interesting. Um, the first volume of the audio book will release on December 15th, so we don't have long to wait. The second one, January 26th. The third, February 24th. And the MP3 CD versions will release next year. So um, presumably those will be like, you know, streaming, download, whatever, and then we get an actual physical yeah. copy later but, on. But can they, make the, can they make the sound of the knife going into the eye? Uh, that's a good question. I'm sure they will try. <laughs> yeah. There's somebody out there who could do like crazy sound effects. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm curious because, I mean, they're basically just dubbing an anime without the anime. Yeah. Um, so I'll be curious to see what that what that comes with. And obviously, it's, it's the original books, not the actual, you know, animation. But uh, uh, it didn't need to go through kind of just that much effort for a uh, novel series like that. But, uh, you know, not complaining. Um, kind of surprised they didn't do this a few months earlier. It would have been good for, for October. But, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. what can you do? Well, just it, it, hearing that makes me think back to having listened to uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm, mm-hmm. And, you know, they did some simple uh, background noises mm-hmm. and, spe- and special <clears throat> effects and stuff. Mm-hmm. This is back, the, good Lord, was that early 80s, late 70s? Yeah. Uh, um, but that was, you know, I remember yeah. listening to that, like when I would go to bed and be like, yeah. oh, this is so cool. And like just that kind of idea, yeah. like to hear mm. not just talking, to actually hear like what they're doing riding on the horse mm. the sounds of the night and yeah. wind and animals be like oh that's yeah. oh i hope it's good it's a radio play yeah you know it's yeah. a radio play yeah it's like oh i hope it's really good mm-hmm. we, we know, um, i'm curious um i'm also kind of intrigued uh let me just check out a little bit are there only three labor hunter d novels um or are they just releasing the first three um yeah. It's an interesting question. I'm looking up. Uh, well, continuing Wikipedia. <laughs> no, there is not. There is a Wikipedia <laughs> article, list of Vampire Hunter D novels. Um, there are many, many, many <laughs> Vampire Hunter D novels. There are several dozen of these. Wow. So I guess they're just doing, it, maybe it could just be that they, they're just announcing the first three and right. other, others might come. Right, yeah. And if that sells fantastically, then there'll be another three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, who knows? Boy, wouldn't a modern anime version of Vampire Hunter D look interesting? Boy, with a modern budget. With a yeah. Patreon that maybe fans could... There we I'm go, sorry, but... you know. <laughs> Kickstarter campaign. Hey, hey. Why not? Go fund me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, hey. Um, yeah, but that's all the news for this week. See you all next week.